Hey, we're in the street question with Lauren Kaufman. There we go. I am so excited to have Lauren on the podcast. We have actually spent the last hour and a half talking, which I tend to do, and we're only going to record yes. a recorded podcast. So all that, all that we, we should do like a behind the scenes podcast, right? I know. Yeah. We should do some outtakes. Uh, the secret, the secret this, podcast. That'd be the awesome. Secret so. podcast. But I feel like we've come full circle here because how, you how so? were my first podcast. Really? I don't know, maybe like in 2021 or 2020, something like that. No. It was the first time I had ever recorded one. Uh, yeah, maybe. Actually, yeah. okay, yeah. 2020 was when I first started too. So, uh, b- by the way, let's, before we get into it, Lauren, I have known Lauren for a while. We actually, I think the first time we met in person was that I spoke at a leadership event um, in, in New York State in the Long Island area. Um, I just remember it very, um, very specifically that day and we connected, we stayed connected. And I've kind of watched you blog, share your ideas. And and anyone who's, uh, you can check the description or in the description down below, Lauren has an amazing blog. And I, I'm gonna be honest with you, not only do you write very well, you write very consistently, which makes me very happy because there's nothing worse Thank than someone you. who writes well, but you're like surprised when they write because they like, it's just like once every, it's like Groundhog's Day. So, um, but the reason why Lauren is on today is because she actually has a new book called the leader inside stories of mentorship to inspire the leader within so congratulations thank so, you george i'm so <laughs> proud i'm so proud of you and this is actually published with impress books so i'm very proud of that as well so we're talking a little bit about the book it is actually available again in the description down below you can check out the link on amazon i know um, it's not just you who wrote it. You actually brought on some amazing collaborators. I know all of them and I'm very proud of all of these people. So it just, I loved seeing the faces on this, um, description, but before we kind of get into the three questions, uh, tell us a little bit about the book, you know, to give us a little synopsis, a little short version of this, uh, of the book. And we'll kind of dive into it a little bit deeper after that. Sure. Well, I I first want to say that I wouldn't be sitting here with a book if it wasn't for George, because years ago, George uh, had challenged me. And I know I've told this story before. I've actually written about this story. (laughs) He uh, challenged me to blog in front of a mentor program where I was using his book, The Innovator's Mindset. And he said, you should really blog. And I was like, okay. And I started blogging and it became a uh, consistent habit. And it's one that has really, really helped me grow as an educator. Um, I've become a better thinker, a better learner, a better writer, a better reader, because I'm always looking for new things to read to inspire ideas. Um, And it's connected me to a lot of educators um, and people all over the place globally, really. Um, So, you know, the next part was that George had said to me, well, now you need to write a book. I don't know if you remember that, George. I do. Years ago, you said that to me, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, You know, I wasn't ready at the time, but I remember, I think it was last year, probably about a year and a half ago, I had texted you, and I said, what do I need to do to put in a proposal for a book? And you said, are you ready? And I said, I'm ready. I'm writing. I I have this idea that I'm putting together. He's he's like, okay, you do your table of contents, your intro, your, your first chapter, and I was at it. I was like, okay. I was looking at all my material, all my content. And I was like, what direction do I want to go in? Because I had a lot of content and I was just trying to think about how to best thread it all together to to weave a beautiful story. Because I really feel like that our lives are like these collections of stories um, and those stories can really positively impact others. So what's the story? What's the narrative I want to tell here? And so I was really, you know, in in thinking about this, I've been inspired by a lot of leaders and a lot of people, and I've used a lot of these interactions as guides on my path. And that's a lot about what I write about. And a lot of these people I I surround myself with um, happen to be women, (laughs) you know, um, but also uh, others as well. Um, And I thought about, well, wouldn't it be great to have this book where I can not only share my path to leadership, um, people who have recognized leadership qualities within me from the time I was a very little girl till now, um, but also I'm very big on amplifying other people's voices and elevating other people's um, 
gifts because we have to, we're better together. Collectively, uh, we are better. Um, and so I brought in some voices, all of who I know. So I have Lainey Rowell, I have um, Stephanie Rothstein, I have my fourth grade teacher, Linda Roth, who still is a mentor to me to this day. And I think that's a pretty cool aspect of this book that your, my fourth grade teacher is writing in it with me, um, Natasha Nurse and Megan Lawson. So um, all of these people are fantastic educators, uh, fantastic writers and thinkers and thought leaders. Um, and, and that was important to me. And I know you've done that in a lot of your books, George. Um, I know because of the teacher was a big inspiration uh, for that concept for me to be able to do this. And now your book, uh, What Makes a Great Principal, actually reminds me a lot of this. Um, because I think it's nice when you're reading a book to, you know, you have my voice, you have the author's voice, but now let's hear this idea right. from someone else. And maybe it could be a little bit different. Maybe they, they've taken a different entry point to this idea. Um, and then back to another voice. I think it keeps it interesting and right. engaging. There's something about that I really, really like. I like the spirit of that. So anyway, the book really came together because I was blogging about my path to leadership. I was blogging a lot about, and by the way, the first part of the book is all about the path to the leader inside. All of these people who serve as signposts along your journey, they're kind of lanterns that guide you. Even interactions along the way that might you might have considered unfavorable, those are important um, interactions too, because they tell you who you want to be and who you don't want to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first part of the book. The second part of the book is all about mentors are all around us. Um, and it's really through mentorship and coaching um, that, you know, I am the person and, and leader and educator I am today. Um, and, and in a former school district, I actually was, uh, you know, had the opportunity of running a mentor program. That's how I met you. And, um, you know, so this book is, is not only storytelling, but a lot of actionable ideas for um, not only how, is, how does a mentor impact you, but what are some ideas you can bring back? to your district um, to help you implement a strong mentor program in your district. Um, and then the third part is really about stories of impact and courage, um, you know, and, and bringing in some voices around, you know, think the idea of we think we can't do these things sometimes, and then we can, and it surprises us. It's like, if you look back at all the past versions of yourself, they would be so proud of you. I think I've seen that on social media mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, but what's nice about the book is that it's a combination, really, of storytelling, yeah. of some research, and then some actionable ideas that educators and district leaders can really implement tomorrow. And I think my hope is that it gets people to think about um, how important it is to recognize the gifts in others so that they can pay it forward and use those gifts to move priorities forward in their district, um, to build capacity within themselves so they can build capacity in others. Um, you know, so every role in education are opportunities to really invite you to think about the educator you are, who you are, and who are you, you are continuously striving to be. That's really what the book is all about. And, you know, it's interesting before, um, you know, I had put something out on social media this morning the first time I really put it out there, like the book is coming, it's here, you know, Right. Um, I was a little bit fearful. And right. I had some conversations yesterday with some, uh, one of them being our good friend, Megan Lawson, um, to give me some advice around that. And then right when that was happening, I read this quote on um, Instagram that said, may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. Right. And it really helped me push send out into the social media world today, because when you write a book, and I guess I've overcome this fear a little bit in my blogging, because you are putting yourself out there and you're thinking out there when you blog, but now the book is like permanent, right? Like, <laughs> Your words like are out there. Like <laughs> I know, tablet, eh? I know, because with blog, you can go back in, you can kind of, um, you know, change some ideas, add to it, revise, mm -hmm. refine them. But here it's like, I really... You know, and I, I know a lot of people probably think of this about their 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 books, but you know, it, it was hard to give that final yeah. 
yeah. draft in because you're like, oh my gosh, it's so final. Could I have done more? Could I have right. said more? Um, should I have gone another direction? But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm here. I can't believe I'm here with you even talking about this. Um, but well, I'm it's, it's here. It's here. It's here. And, I know. You know. So I was, as I was listening to you, I wrote down a couple of things. And one, one of the things I'm very proud of um, that I do, that I know you do, uh, is try to give the opportunity for others you know, when people are looking at me to shine the light on others, right? And I think there's a real power of this is that, yeah, you have, you know, your name on the book, but you're also making sure people have different perspectives. And there's a couple of reasons I think that's really, really important. And you, you kind of touched on this. Uh, one of the things I think is really important for books is like, if you write from your perspective only, then people can always say, well, that works where you're at because of this. And it's so different here. And so then people are like, oh, actually, there is a through line that, hey, here's how you can tweak it for this community versus this space. And so then when you have different perspectives kind of still sharing to the same vision, there's something really uh, powerful about that. But I also know that um, some people um, might agree with my idea, but they don't necessarily connect with me for whatever reason. So if you can get someone else doing that in a different way. Like I, I actually, I always make fun of this when Katie Novak and I wrote um, Innovate Inside the Box together. Um, someone wrote, uh, uh, it should have been more Katie, less George. And they just wrote that. And, I was like, mm -hmm. and so like they wrote yeah. that, but I, you know, as much as it kind of bugs me, there's also, I, I appreciate that where some people would probably gravitate to my maybe a couple, maybe my mom, you know, a couple of relatives and stuff like that. <laughs> and I don't even know that, but they, you know, they might gravitate to way I share ideas and things like that too. So there is a, a, a power of this. And when you talk about mentorship, um, I think a really important aspect of this and, and you would know that I do this when you mentor people, the really important thing is not necessarily saying what they want to hear, but saying what they need to hear. And sometimes what they need to hear is not what they want to hear. And, but doing it in a way where you have a relationship, where you have a connection. And most of the people that I connect with that have worked with me over the years, they know I'll tell them the truth of what I believe, whether they like it or not. And the hopes is that it pushes them to something. Because if you just, you know, are just filled all the time with everything's good, don't ever change, then what's the point of the mentor, right? Like, it's kind of like, hey, have you thought about this? Or think about this or like, hey, I don't know if I'd go that way and here's why. And so I think part of that too is um, mentorship is really crucial in all aspects of education. The, I, I've mentioned this 10 million times. When I ask a teacher what's good about their principal and they say, they just let me do whatever I want. I'm like, oh, it's such a bad answer. And it's not, and maybe it's true, but it does not help that teacher. It doesn't help that teacher become better. And I'm, you know, we want autonomy in our practice, but autonomy doesn't necessarily, you know, solely in itself doesn't necessarily need you, you know, lead you to becoming better. So I really appreciate that because I know um, some of the thoughts that you're sharing here are going to make people better, but they're going to challenge them too, um, not from your perspective, um, but of others. So like when you talk about this idea of the leadership, the leader inside the, the story of mentorship, like why did you feel um, you needed, you wanted to write this book. Like what like compelled you to like get this out and you felt this would be a great time for this to actually lead some conversations in our schools? I, I really feel like it's in those small moments, those small moves that make that big impact, you mm -hmm. know? And I think those are the small moments and the small interactions, those aren't the moments that necessarily get the spotlight when you achieve something. And when you achieve something, it's really about a collection mm -hmm. of those puzzle pieces put together that form this big picture. And I wanted to illuminate that. I wanted people to see in this book that the setbacks and obstacles we face, they're not the sum total of our lives, right? They're just these little moments of discom discomfort that bridge your past with your future. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I really felt like writing this book and the stories that I share and the stories that others share in this book could help people see and recognize and notice and name how significant those moments are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't recognize them in the moment, 
when they're happening. You know, sometimes when we have a challenge or a disappointment or a failure um, or an obstacle, you know, we're so deep into that. We're living it ourselves that it's hard to step back and see it, why that happened. Um, but I think that, you know, I, I look at this book as like unwrapping a gift. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we're unwrapping all of these stories because gifts, I really find, feel like everybody has gifts to share. Gifts live within these exceptional educators, but they're just waiting to be unwrapped in the right place mm -hmm. at the right time with the right people. Um, and that's really what this book is sharing. And I'm very specific in this book um, about things that I have discovered on this path, interactions that I've had, but I feel like it is like unwrapping that present because at the end of the chapter, it's like, and here's why that happened. And then here are some actionable ideas right. that you can implement with your teachers and your leaders in your district. I also felt this was important because I think there are future leaders and I'm not just talking about leaders in formal leadership yeah, roles. Yeah, it could yeah. be at any level of an organization that are waiting. They're just waiting for someone to recognize those innate gifts and just unleash that greatness that lives within them. So it's important for leaders or just other people or colleagues around us to be cognizant of that because not everybody has that. Not everybody has that person who is there to lift them up when they need it the most or notice a name and point something out in them so that they can cultivate that talent and then therefore pay it forward to someone else. That's awesome. You know, the when you're talking about this, some of the best opportunities or things that happen in our life were jobs I didn't get, jobs that, you know, didn't work out. I, I know it sounds weird, relationships that didn't work out and you you don't realize it at the time and one of my um things i kind of say to people is when you're kind of in a tough situation if you think about it and you almost like pull yourself out of your body and then actually talk to yourself like you would a friend that's typically the mm -hmm. best advice you give often the best advice we have is what we give to others but we don't take ourselves and so really kind of pulling out because, you know, I look at some of the things I wish, like I wanted so bad in the moment. And if I would have got them would have led me in a totally different trajectory and maybe not in a good way. And so I, I, I really love that you talked about this. So I'm reading this book. I take it out. What, what do you, what do you hope it achieves? Like not necessarily on a team level, but on an individual level. So what do you hope? Like I'm reading this, what will this do for any person reading this book? And, and this is not like, obviously, only from what you're telling me, it's not just a, a an admin book or like I want to be an administrator book or I'm currently an administrator book. It's anyone in education because that the, leadership is really the ability to move people forward in a positive direction, which any person, no matter your role in education, has the ability mm -hmm. to do. So, what do you what do you hope the individual reader gets out of reading this book? Wow, this is a this is a big question uh, because reading. I only is ask such big a... questions. Only yeah, ask I know. Uh, well, reading is such a personal experience, you know, so I am anxious to see how people mm. respond to it. Um, but look, the heartbeat of education lives in the walls of our schools. Um, and inside the walls of those schools, you find kids and teachers and leaders in the mess of learning. <laughs> and that's exciting. Um, when I go to work every day and I get to step into buildings and classrooms and being meetings with people, talk to people who have not only my own perspectives, but different perspectives, um, you know, I find that it makes me better. You know, I grow as an educator that way. Um, so I really just hope that people recognize that leadership isn't a title, mm -hmm. um, but it's an opportunity to to recognize the greatness that lives within others. You know, my dad always told me growing up, we salute the person, not the title, Lauren. Yeah. And I talk about this in the book and that there is a leader living inside us all. It doesn't matter um, what role you serve in. And that's why we're here. We're here for kids. So imagine if we can recognize that as leaders and our teachers, that they in turn can recognize that in kids. Mm -hmm. And 
kids need to be able to see themselves as leaders because they're going to be doing jobs that don't even exist yet. Um, so it's like this effect of, you know, it could start with the leader, you know, whether it be the, the, the formal leader, the teacher, um, it, it just takes one person uh, to change the trajectory of your path. That's what I want people to get out of it. And I want them to slow down and notice those small things and those small interactions that can truly make a difference. You, you know, it's, you, you kind of touched on this earlier. Sometimes the, the one person that can change the directory is someone who believes in you. And sometimes it's actually the person who doesn't. And mm -hmm. it's a, it, like all of this, I think all of what you're talking about, and this is something I truly believe in, and you know that, is at the end of the day, you, it doesn't matter what book you read. It only matters what you do with the books you read. That, that to me yes. is like, you still got to do something with this too. And I think, you know, that, that's something that I'm very proud of you for doing because um, I've given you a lot of advice over the years, but <laughs> if you didn't take it, um, well, I don't know. I, I know you don't take all my advice and no one should take anyone, everyone's advice on everything, but advice I've given you, um, you've like, I never, you would have, this book came together because you're willing to jump in and try new things. And that to me is the most important thing. It doesn't matter the advice someone gives is what you do with advice. It's what you do with this. And so I actually want to ask you this last question, because I feel like I'm like an an old man talking about this stuff because I'm like one of the last people that talks about the importance of blogging. It's like <laughs> blogging's not cool anymore. And, and I actually, I get a little concerned about it in the sense that, well, how could, why would I read a blog when I can read a tweet and it's so much shorter. And it's like, everything is about quick snippets, little one minute videos, 15 second videos. And I actually think it, it harms us in many ways. And I think a lot of times we, we complain about kids attention spans, not recognizing that adult attention spans have gone um, down significantly. I'm very proud to say that I've read more books in the last three years than I have the 45 years prior in my life. Um, and I've really tried to slow down and really try to take in more long form stuff. So I still am a big believer in the power of blogging to really kind of synthesize and and actually, you know, help you really kind of put your thoughts together in the sense that you know other people are going to read this, so you have to be very cognizant of what you say. And I always, I always talk about this three hundred and sixty degree view of writing. That what's the argument against what I'm saying, and how do I make sure I address it before someone actually brings it up in the comments, right? So mm -hmm. like, hey, and you'll see a lot of times in my blog, I'll say, hey, I'm not saying, I'm not saying this to like say like, hey, I know here's the argument and here's how I'm gonna address it before it comes up. How do you feel um, blogging for the past several years set you up to be successful in bringing this book together? Really great question. Another great question. <laughs> um, well, it's interesting. I have, so I'm, I'm thinking about everything that you said, especially about reading uh, because I, like you, like to take in a lot of different types of information at different times. I could sometimes be reading like two or three books at mm -hmm. the same time, and maybe I'm listening to several podcasts or I'm listening to a book on Audible. And my style is that I will pull in things that I've learned. And your blog being at the top of the list and your podcasts you. and your work, um, you know that I always do that. And I'll shoot you a text here and there like, oh, love this or an email. And I do, I do read them <laughs> every, every week. I appreciate that. Um, but what I do, he, here's what I do. Here's, here's a little tip and this, this works for me and it might not be new to your audience, but as I, as things are resonating with me, I open my phone, my, my iPhone, you know, mm -hmm. and I jot it down in my notes section and I'll title uh, the notes section, you know, whatever book I'm reading or podcasts I'm listening to, and I'll just start writing the quotes. A lot of times I'll speak into my phone and what I do every week is I look across, what have I read this week Yeah. Uh, that has really inspired me and I'll start synthesizing this information and then I'll think about, well, what's happened this week on the front lines? 
you know, at, at work, you know, how can I connect this idea that I've been thinking about that really resonated with me? And then this person's idea, and then this person's idea, and then this just happened to me at work. I just had this interaction or I just facilitated this professional learning experience. How does this fit together? Um, and then that's how the style of my writing was really born through blogging. And I pretty much stick to that formula. It's like, here's some research. Here's some great quotes. Here's what happened this week. I tell a quick little story about what happened this week. And then here's some actionable ideas you can implement tomorrow in your world because this might have happened to me, like you said before, like this is what happened in my world. That might not apply to you, but here are some things that might apply to you. Um, and when you talk about how people might not have time to read, I, I've been starting to get more cognizant with my blogs. Um, I think when I started in the earlier years, they were a little bit longer yeah. than they are now. And I realized longer is not always better. Yeah. Um, and I'll be honest, there are some, there are some weeks where I'm just not feeling writing. I'm like, Oh, you know, nothing is inspiring me this week, yeah. but I do anyway, you know, mm -hmm. I, I do anyway. And what's interesting about those is that sometimes those are what resonate the most with people, yeah. the weeks that I'm not really feeling it. And, and, and believe me, I don't write to get likes or I don't write to Good. get all that feedback. You know, I write because I'm reflecting on my learning. And that's, it's a, it's a part of professional learning for me. This is how I grow and think about new ideas. Um, but that is the interesting part about it is like the times that I don't feel as confident with a piece, uh, those are the ones that resonate. And the times where I put like a lot of effort into a piece, then I'm like, okay, they don't res they don't resonate, but that's fine because I still grew through that process. So I hope I didn't get too far from your question, but I mean, great. You Basically, know, that's what it was. You know, actually, what I thought of is the sometimes when I don't feel like going to the gym, those are the most important workouts, mm. right? Because like if you every time I didn't feel like going, I'd be in trouble, <laughs> right? You and then you get going, and you're like, oh, actually, you know. And I do something very similar. Like uh, just before we talked today, yesterday I wrote uh, my email, and I wasn't, you know, it's July fourth, uh, the day after. Mm -hmm. you know fireworks going on my dog freaking out all that stuff mm -hmm. and i just took three pictures quotes and i wrote stuff about them and it's mm -hmm. like pictures I, I just even sometimes i look at my photos app and say like hey what's a picture that kind of inspires me to write something today so i think it's a really important aspect so here's what i'm gonna tell you and lauren first of all congratulations again <laughs> thank inside. you the link is down below. Not only will you love what Lauren writes, but the incredible uh, co-authors, co-contributors on this blog. So a lot of times people listen to this and they're like, oh, that's cool. And then they don't buy your book. And here's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not expecting when everyone listening to this to buy the book, but read Lauren's blog. It's for free. It's linked down below. And if you like what you see, pick up the book. That's what I tell you, because I'll tell you, people love Lauren's blog and you, you get a, some free samples of writing. And then that will tell you. And I promise you, if you read her stuff, you'll be like, I should get that book. So <laughs> I, I, again, congratulations, Lauren. Thank you, George. Uh, everyone, check out the, the book, The Leader Inside, Stories of Mentorship to Inspire the Leader Within. Uh, I wish you great success on this. And uh, congratulations on, a lot of people don't get this, not just writing the book, but writing continuously to get to the point where you could write a book because sometimes we just like, I want to write a book. I'm like, what are you going to talk about? Like start getting your ideas out there and you'll, a book will, you don't find the book, the book finds you if you do it right. And I feel that's what you did through this process. Mm -hmm. So everyone, thanks for listening. Lauren, again, congratulations to you. Thank and your you. Team. <laughs> Thank you thanks so for listening, much. Everyone. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye everyone.